She's confined to a wheelchair, um, so she's seated at council table in the wheelchair. Uh, it's not, you know, prominently displayed, I guess I would say, throughout the trial. Um, you know, the defense isn't trying to put it out there like, you know, to, some type of an exhibit, basically. But during the, uh, during the testimony, she was allowed to come around and basically sit in front of council table, which was not the witness stand, and face the jury um, seated in the wheelchair, uh, which I, you know, puts her at a disadvantage and she's seated and I'd be standing at a podium and looking down and, and arguing with her. So I had asked the judge if I could remain seated so I could try to just carry on a dialogue and that it wouldn't look like, um, it wouldn't look like I was trying to be overbearing or, or you know, argumentative with her. She didn't get up on the stand. She was in the middle of because she couldn't have got up there anyway. But she was in the middle. And uh, they were asking her some questions, I think. But she didn't. Oh, no, I don't even think. I don't even remember. Well, she. I know she kept denying it. So she did. They did ask her some questions, prosecuting attorney. And he was saying, well, was y'all at this table and this and that? And she says, no, I, was, I didn't do that. And this and that, well, Jamar said that y'all planned it, and y'all even, that Durrell had threatened to kill him, and that was supposed to be his best friend because he didn't want to pay him to uh, the money that they promised him he didn't get, and uh, told him if he said anything, they was going to kill him too. That y'all told him that, and, oh, we didn't do that, and she just, she denied everything. You know, d putting Darrell on the stand for the state would have been a tremendous amount of, of baggage for them. I think that they made a strategic decision to make the case against Alicia, not about Darrell, which is what it would have been if they put him on the stand. Um, the case was about Alicia. They made the case about what she did, the fact that she was the one who took out those insurance policies. She was the one that came up with this plan to kill her husband. She was the one having this torrid affair. She could have divorced him. She didn't. She was the one who was lying the whole time and really showed no remorse for what happened to Jeremy. And so they were able to accurately portray her for who she was to that jury, and that ultimately led uh, to a successful prosecution of her. Jurors want to see a grieving widow following the death of your spouse, and that is not at all what they saw. And the minute you show jurors that you're living lavishly off of insurance money, you lose all sympathy from the jurors, and you are no longer the victim. You are not a grieving widow. And that immediately was a nail in the coffin for her from 12 people who were sitting there judging her and saying, how, how could you live like that after you just lost your husband and you bring in your lover? And you know, all of these things just kept building against her that they threw the book at her. <laughs>